So we completed two sessions. In the first session, we discussed about course, what are the applications, what we are going to learn. The second session, we discussed about the fusion and the cloud. What does it mean by fusion? How Oracle came up with the fusion concept? And what does it mean by cloud? And what are the different options are available in the cloud as SaaS, PaaS, IaaS, and the instances when it comes to the product access that we can access through instance concept. What are the different type of instances we can have? When you do the implementation, ideally we get access to test and do production. If required, client can get development instance. But in purpose with the sample data, you can find the vision instance what we discussed. Any questions from previous classes, please? Any questions from last two sessions, please? Lashman, test instance and stage instance, are they both same? Test instance and the? Stage instance. I didn't get the term. Okay. Okay, sometimes you know, uh, in our office, uh, they used to call that as stage instance, wherever you stage can. Instance. Stage instance. Yeah. Stage. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> See, so you can have some different names internally based on the purpose what we are going to use. See, along with this, as a part of implementation, you can call the instances with the different, different names. Like you can call it as a cloned instance, you can call a CRP instance, you can call a U8 instance. You can call with the different, different names. That totally depends how that internal team want to call it and with the purpose. Okay. okay. Good. So by default, this is what you have to understand. Okay. Oh, yeah. In, okay. in my project, I may call it as with some different name. Okay. Hmm. From outside, if you listen that name, you cannot understand what purpose I am using it. Got it. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from anyone, please? We'll have a like implementation classes. There also we'll touch base on these instances and the, what are the other names we can use for these instances. We'll discuss all those points very detailed. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So when you are part of implementation project, okay, when you are part of implementation project, you get access to instance. Initially, we get access to the test instance only. So when you get access to test instance, ideally you get access to the user called as FA admin. Okay, FA admin is a seeded user for every instance which Oracle provides. In some cases, Oracle provides different user also. They create and they'll provide that username. But FA admin is the seeded user for every instance. And when you get access to any instance, what we have to do is the first activity is we have to create our own user. Because with FA admin, you can do some limited activities only. How exactly that I'll show you in the system also. Okay. So Oracle provides the default user called as FA admin. By using this FA admin user, we have to create our own user. Why we are going to create the user for the implementation purpose? That is the reason in the fresh environment, as a part of implementation in the fresh environment, fresh environment is fresh instance. There won't be any sample data that we call as fresh instance. Ideally, we initially we get access to test as well as production also, but we don't touch the production instance. Once everything is ready, then we can jump into this production till the time we'll work on the test environment only. So that also we call as a fresh environment. There won't be any sample data. When you get access to fresh instance with FA admin or any other user from Oracle, we have to create our own user. The user what we create within the instance, we call as implementation user. We call it as implementation user. When you create implementation user, <coughs> 
when you create implementation user you have to create implementation user with what permissions okay with what permissions you have to create the implementation user so when you create implementation user to allow that user to work as a consultant that means full privileges to do the implementation we have to assign the roles say for example we are going to create the user called as um i want to create user called as erp trick okay erp trick so when i create a user called as erp tree i want to allow the erp tree user to work as a consultant that means full privileges for that we have to assign the two roles okay what we have to assign roles so roles will have a privileges inside of the roles what that user can do that can be included so if you are if somebody is going to work as a implementation consultant that user need access to two roles the role one is application implementation consultant the second one is it security manager these two roles we have to assign to the user if we assign the two roles the erp tree user can start working on the system as a consultant if you give the access to application implementation consultant role what that user can do the user can perform the setups or you can say configuration okay if you assign application implementation consultant role to erp tree user erp tree user can do the setups or you can call as configuration say for example you are going to implement accounts payable application yes accounts payable application related all the setups can be completed by erp tree user since the user is getting access to application implementation consultant role and if you assign it security manager role to this erp tree user the erp tree user will be able to create the new users okay so i create new user assign roles the it security manager role will allow this erp tree user to create the new users from the erp tree user and roles can be assigned which user is working for which application which user is responsible for what accordingly the roles can be assigned and if we can create the new roles also those all will discuss going forward now you can take the simple point if you are going to work as a consultant or any in any project we need access to minimum two roles those are application implementation consultant and it security manager why we need application implementation consultant role to implement any application implementing means primarily doing the setups as per the business requirement so if you want to implement any ap application we have to do the setups or the same setups you can call as a configuration configuration or setups or implementation everything is same to do the setups in any application we need this role access to create the new users and to assign the roles to those users we require it security manager role this is what we have to understand so if you assign application implementation consultant role to any user that user will get access to fsm okay that user will get access to what fsm fsm what does it mean by fsm fsm stands for functional setup manager fsm stands for functional setup manager if you assign application implementation consultant role to erp tree user erp tree user will get access to fsm functional setup manager with the help of functional setup manager the erp tree user can do the setups if you assign it security manager role to erp tree user the erp tree user will get access to security console
from security console only the user will be able to create the new users and the user can assign the roles which user need access to which application such kind of assignments can be done by erp tree user so this is what we have to understand when we are going to work for any implementation point the very first step is we have to create our own user by assigning these two roles okay we get default user access that could be fa admin or something else but with fa admin so you cannot uh, do many activities how that is restricted we will discuss okay that is the reason we cannot proceed with fa admin user by using fa admin user we have to create our own user so that is the reason so we have to assign these two roles so any questions here please just to understand this point any questions here please and one more point the application implementation consultant and it security manager these are the two roles these roles oracle is providing these roles oracle is providing what are the roles oracle is providing that you can call as senior please go on mute please go please please make sure that just if you have a question you can unmute and you can ask the question same time please look at the background okay make sure that that will support you so seeded roles what does it mean by seeded roles seeded roles means the roles which you oracle is providing okay, we can create our own roles also how to create where how, how to create why we have to create we'll discuss all those points but for now the point is what are the roles oracle is providing those we call as seeded roles what is the purpose of the roles if you want to access anything within the instance we need role only with the help of role only we can access to anything within the instance to do the setups and to create the transactions we need roles and for each and every application oracle is providing the roles for every application oracle is providing the roles take example of accounts payables here we discuss different applications right discussed ap er cm say so you want to create invoices in the accounts payables we have we need access to accounts payable related roles you want to create the payments separate roles are there you want to create the sales invoice and the receivables we have a separate roles for receipts separate roles or else you want to work on receivables application to create the sales invoice and the receipts yes relevant roles we have to assign if you want to perform anything we need access to specific roles for every application or at least providing the roles you want to allow one user to work on the payables assign the payables roles you want to allow one user to work on the receivables assign the receivables role you want to allow one user to work on the fixed assets assign fixed assets roles for every application or at least providing the separate roles now what are the roles we are discussing as a application implementation consultant and it security manager these two roles are not related to any application the two roles purpose is to do the setups as well as to create the new users and to assign the roles to those users and these two roles we call as seeded roles not only these two there are many seeded roles which oracle is providing what are the roles oracle is providing those we call as seeded roles application specific seeded roles also we have for gl apr cm fa for each and every application oracle is providing the seeded roles so we'll we'll come to know those roles also very soon going forward so now any questions from anyone on this point please any questions please Lakshman, one thing I have observed here, as compared to uh, release twelve, uh, release twelve, we have we create the responsibility and assign the responsibility to the users, and here uh, you call them roles. Is that correct. so? Correct, correct. In EBS, we okay. use the responsibility concept. In Fusion, yes. there is no responsibility concept. Okay, okay. Thank you. Fusion, see in EBS, what we have equal to this. roles we have menus right menu yes a menu right can we assign menu to user directly no no you if you want can, menu, through roles only no uh, huh? so through yeah. responsibilities yes, yes 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 if you cannot assign menu to user 
so that is the reason you create responsibility through responsibility menu can be assigned to user here mm -hmm. equal to menu we have a roles roles can be assigned to user directly that's all okay okay yeah so it is like assigning the menu to the user directly yeah equal to that if you compare equal okay okay yeah got it we'll see once we get into the system once we start creating the transactions everything we will be able to correlate with the ebs if you are okay to okay fine we'll count any other questions yes lakshman efa admin means uh, fa stands for in a specific sorry F admin. if if fa admin yeah oh if it stands for uh, can you please okay okay F fa stands for fusion applications fa Achha. fusion fusion applications admin administrator yes yeah, administration yeah cool and uh, first and second uh, application implementation consultation and it security manager these two are uh, default uh, roles uh, every uh, consultant will get by the oracle right no need to get uh, separate uh, no need any approvals right correct correct these am i correct roles, these two roles will help us to do the implementation who are going yeah. to work, work as a consultants but okay. all those consultants need access to this minimum two roles with these roles they can do all the setups and they can do the implementation for any applications those can be finance or scm or procurement or hcm take any environment any area you will be able to do the implementation yeah uh, you mean everyone will have this access these two yes, responsible consultants roles. definitely need access to these two roles yes yeah okay thank you so much yeah any other questions uh lakshman can can we like uh, edit or modify that seeded role like as per the customer requirement yeah what reality we do is we never edit seeded roles we copy and we edit okay okay understood we copy and we edit oracle is not allowing to edit seeded roles you can copy okay actually. Okay, as per our requirement, you can modify so that whatever Oracle is providing as a seeded, those will remain as this. You can take the advantage of those roles by copying and by modifying as per your requirement. Possible. We'll have a okay. session on that. I am going to take one session on that. How to copy the roles? How to edit? How to create the roles from the scratch as per uh, business requirement? Those all we will cover. How to compare one role with another role? Okay, how to edit the roles? Uh, we have a different type of roles also. We'll discuss all those points. That that would be as a separate session. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions here, please? Okay. No questions. Now, first we'll go and see how to create the implementation user. Okay, we are calling it as implementation user. We have other type of user also. We'll discuss later. to understand that we have to complete few setups after completing few setups only you can create other type of user so initially in the fresh instance we can create only implementation user okay implementation user other type of user is employee user okay once you are ready with a few setups you can create the employee user there is a difference between implementation user and employee user so when we deal with employee user we'll discuss the difference also fine let's see how to create the implementation user how to assign these two roles okay right so this is the instance i am going to use okay this is a cloud instance so I'll log into this instance i think i created one user called as erp3 in this environment i'm going to connect to this instance with erp3 user so we will share one user name okay user credentials to you with that user you can log into this instance and you can create your own user by following the process what we are going to see now okay this is how we have to connect to the instance so this is instance url here whatever you see that is we call as instance url anyway you will get a email so in that you can see the exact link so once you log our target is user creation okay our target is implementation user creation later we will understand all these points what you see here everything will come to know but now that is not our target of understanding what different options we have what these all are here and there 
we'll see later. Our target is user creation and roles assignments. To create the user, to create the new user, click on this bar icons. This we call as a navigator. Here they're given as a vision. This is a logo. You can change the logo. Okay, you can change the logo. So here you can click on navigator icon, bar icon. Just click on the navigator. It is opening the panel. Okay, it is opening the panel. Within this panel, you have to go to tools. How to go to tools. Under tools, we have one task called as security console. This is all we call as a tasks. T A S K task. So everything we call as a task. So under tools, if you expand the tools, you can find one task called as security console. Click on security console. Just click on security console. We are landing in this page. Now select users. Just click on users. So here we can create the new user. From here we can create the new user. So you can click on add user account to create the new user. I'll repeat the same once again. So I'm connecting to the instance as ERP3. Provide password. Click on sign in. So this is a cloud instance. So to connect to this instance, you no need to download any plugins or add-ons are not required. Directly you can connect to this instance from your smartphone also, from any device which is connected to internet, you can connect to this instance. This instance you can call as pod and environment also discussed. You can call with any name. You can call it as a pod or you can call it as environment or instance. Now, to create the user, click on this navigate icon. Here you can see three bars, three lines. Okay. Click on that navigate icon. It will open the panel. And you can find the tools section expanded. If you click on tools, it will be expanded. Under tools, you can find one task called as security console. Click on security console. And here, select users. Select users. Now click on add user account. Click on add user account. Now here we can create our user. So whatever the user we are going to create, that user we call as implementation user. Okay, implementation user. This user from where we are creating from security console, right? We take in the navigation like tools, from navigator tools and security console. Whatever the user you create from security console, that user we call as implementation user. Remember this point. Now here you can give the name. Say I want to create one user called as Geo. Let's hope the user is not exist here. Yes, somebody created it. I'll give the name as Wipro. That is also there. TCS. So give any name, like I'm giving the name as TCS, the last name, the first name, last name, email ID, multiple fields we have, but the last name field is mandatory, star mark you can see, that is the reason just I'm giving the last name. I need username as a TCS, and here you have to provide the password. Here you can look at the password policy, you place the cursor on that I information icon, and it says the password policy is very simple, at least eight characters and one number. Okay, you have to enter the password and you have to confirm. So provide the password and confirm the same. So this is how simply you can create the implementation user. Okay, last name we are giving, the username you are providing. If you want to provide first name and email ID, you can provide. So after creating this user, you have to assign the roles. See here we have add roles. Okay, add roles means the roles what we discussed, application implementation consultant and IT security manager, those roles we have to assign. We'll assign later. First we'll create user and click on save and close. 
Now also we can assign those roles by clicking on add role. We'll assign later. So what user we created? TCS that you can find here. Search for TCS. Click on search. So user you can see display name is TCS. User name also TCS. We didn't provide any mail ID since mail ID field is not mandatory, not compulsory. So it's optional. And user status is active locked. This account is not locked. This account is locked. You cannot log into the instance with this user. Okay. Here you can find the actions. Click on this drop down. You can see lock account. If you lock the account with this user, you cannot log into the instance. Reset password. Anytime you can change the password to this user, you can click on reset password and say manually change the password and you can change the password. Okay. You can provide new password and you can confirm the password. Here, at the same time, you can see the password policy. When you set the password, what rule you have to follow. You can just click on reset password. System will update the new password. And if you want to delete the user, you can delete it. Okay. When you delete, it will delete that user display from this page. From this page only, it will delete. The database, it would be available. That, won't, that user it won't be accessible from this page. That means you cannot contact that user to perform the transactions. Okay. So that's how the deletion is also possible. You can compare one user with another user. When you create a few more users, you can compare it. In the same way, this user, you can copy also. You can copy this user to this user, whatever the roles are assigned, everything will be copied and you can give the new name. Okay, you can modify the name. That's how you can compare this user with another users and you can copy this user also. So how can you compare? Please. What is the question? Yeah, how can we compare the users? Yeah, when you have a one more user, you can compare what roles access this user has. Another user got access to which roles. That's how you can compare. It shows your lock account just like a deactivate the account, right? Correct. Deactivating only. Okay. Once you lock that account, that account will be deactivated, disabled, so that that user cannot log into this instance with that account. This is what we can do. Notice these points. Now, click on display name or click on username. You can click on any name. You can notice these two names got hyperlink. You can click on username or display name. The user record will be open. Okay, this is how we create it. Now, if you want to assign the roles to this user, you can click on edit. Click on edit so that we can assign the roles. To assign the roles, click on add role. And here you can search and assign those two roles. What roles we want to assign? Application implementation consultant role. First assign application implementation consultant role. Okay. Application implementation. Just I'm not typing the full name like application implementation consultant. I'm just typing application implementation only. Now here you can notice there is a role called as application implementation administrator, application implementation consultant, application implementation manager. When you search with the application implementation, you find these three roles, application implementation, administrator, consultant, and manager. And here you can notice the application implementation administrator role. You have a two copies, same name, application implementation administrator, application implementation administrator, two copies you can see. Okay. So two copies, but the difference you can see in the role code, this we call as code. It is starting with ASM application. This is starting with ORA ASM application. Okay. ORA ASM. 
This is yes. <clears throat> choose any roles. One second, one second. Let me explain a few points. Okay, you can choose any role. If you are going to assign this application implementation administrator, you can choose anyone. Inside work, we'll have, we'll have a same privileges. And in the same way, like you can see, the application implementation administrator, somebody copied. This showing as copy. Okay. So somebody copied for their testing purpose or practice purpose. Since this is the environment we are using for practice purpose. And you can see application implementation consultant, application implementation consultant role. Role names are same, codes are different. Codes are different. Here, what is the difference between these two roles? Role name is same, code is different. If any role code is starting with ORA that you cannot edit. Okay, this you cannot edit. This you can edit. These two are seeded. These two are seeded. In some instances, Oracle provide only one. Some instances, they are providing two. But what you have to understand is, if any role code is starting with ORA that you cannot modify, which role code is not starting with ORA that can be modified? Okay, that can be modified even seeded. Since they are providing two, one seeded one, Oracle won't allow you to modify. If they are providing two copies, one you can modify, which is not starting with ORA. You can notice application implementation consultant role somebody copied. We will see all these, how to copy, how to modify also. And uh, two roles also they copied. Okay, which is starting with ORA, which is starting with ASM. And another role is application implementation. Please, please. Application implementation manager, application implementation manager, role name is same, codes are different. It is starting with ASM, this is starting with ORA, which is starting as an ORA that you cannot modify, you cannot change it, you cannot edit it. Okay, but which is not starting with ORA prefix within the role code that you can modify. That means this is starting with ASM, okay, that you can modify. And the same role somebody copied. This ASM role, application implementation manager, somebody copied. Here, ultimately, how to understand? We have a three different roles: application implementation administrator, application implementation consultant, application implementation manager. Which role we have to assign to the user? Application implementation consultant only. So, consultant role will have full privileges compared to administrator and the manager also. So if you assign administrator or manager, you will have a limited access. You will have a limited access to the implementation. You will have a limited access to the, to the setups. Or you can say, you will have a limited access to do the configuration. Doing setups only we call as configuration. That is the reason we have to assign application implementation consultant role to the user. Now, which role we have to assign? These two are same. Codes are different. Anyone you can assign. Okay, you may prefer to assign which is starting with ORA or you can assign this also no issues. But make sure that you are not assigning which is copied by somebody. Okay, so anyone you can assign. I am selecting application implementation consultant. Don't assign administrator and manager not required. You need full privileges that you can see in the consultant role only. Okay, application implementation consultant. Anyone you can select. These below two are copied roles. These two are copied by somebody. So now anyone you can select. What is the difference between these two? It is starting with ORA. This you cannot modify. This is not starting with ORA. This can be modified. You may choose ORA prefix code role. So select application implementation consultant role. Now select the same record. Click on add role membership so that this role will be assigned to the user. In the background, you can see that is assigned. Now, any questions on this point, please? Okay, no questions. We'll assign IT security manager role also to this user. So type IT security manager. Okay, IT security manager, you can see here, IT security manager, IT security manager, role name is same and code is different. It is starting with ORA, it is starting with FND. So you know what is the meaning of ORA. If any role code is starting with ORA, 
that cannot be modified. You cannot edit that role. If role code, role code within the role code, if you don't find OR here, that can be modified. But this two role will have equal privileges. Inside, you can find same privileges. This two role somebody copied. Okay, since we are using this instance for practice purpose, you can see somebody copied and then just given the note, it's copy role, do not use it. Me means they might have done some changes in that. Even how to copy, how to modify, we, are, we will see in the separate sessions. Yeah. So I'm selecting IT security manager, which is starting with ORI or else I can select this also. Inside you'll have the same privileges. I'm selecting where the role code is starting with ORI. Select it and click on that role and click on add role membership and click on done. So this is how you can create the user and you can assign the role. I'm going to click on save and close. Click on done. Now we created user and I want to create one more user. Okay, if I want to create one more user, I have to provide the details. Now, what I want to do is whenever I create the user, I want to select username as an email ID. Okay, I want to provide the email ID. Email ID system has to take as a username. Yes, you can set all those policies. When you create the user, so what are the information, what are the details you want to select and what system has to take as a username in how many days the user password need to be expired, all you can set. If you notice here, when we are creating the user, system is selecting user category as a default. System is selecting user category as default. Because of this default category, you are getting all these fields and what are the Last name I'm giving the last name system is taking as a username. See that same last name it will take as a username. If I give first name, that also it will include in the username. That means here rule is if I provide some mail ID, don't touch this mail ID. So if I provide first name, last name, email ID, what system is doing is first name plus last name. It is combining and it is creating the username automatically. You want to override, you can override. You can remove this, okay? You can give this username like this. Any name you can give. But by default, how system is generating the username? By taking the, okay? By taking the first name and last name. Already just created a rule. It's defaulted, once again, we'll try. Add username. So it's combining first name and last name is creating. So email ID is optional. Okay. Email ID is optional. So that's how it is creating. How it is taking this first name, last name to create the username or else if you want to make email ID is mandatory or else email ID, whatever you provide that name system has to take as a user ID, user name. So those all you can set in the user category. So within this default category, what rule is available? Accordingly, it is taken. What rule is available? By combining first name and last name, username should be created. That's how we have rule in this default. And within this default user category only, we have the password policy also. Password, password policy also you can set within the user category. Along with that, the password need to be expired in how many days? That also you can set within the user category. Here we selected default, only default is available in this. Okay, we can create our own user categories. When we are working for the clients, the client says, okay, we always use email ID as a username. When they enter email, then we can make email ID selection is mandatory at the time of user creation. The same email ID it will pick as a username also. That's how we can create the user category. Okay, you can create the user category. Let's see how to create the user category so that you can understand how that user category will help us for user account creation. So here you can see the task called as user categories. Click on user categories, just cancel this. Click on user categories. So only one category is available. 
this is the category which Oracle is providing. This we can say serial category. Okay, this is a serial category. So click on default category, how Oracle created, you can see here. So you see here, user category name is default and user name generation rule. The user name generation rule, what they given? First name dot last name. By combining those two, it will generate. Generate system username. Okay, when generating, generate system username when generating rule fails and all. Just you can enter also. And password policies. Select password policy. Days before password expires. Okay. So nine, 90 days password will be expired. Days before password expiry warning. In how many days system has to give the warning? Okay. Hours before password reset token expire. When system will send the reset password link. Okay. That should work in how many hours? Four hours that would be active. And what is the password policy? Okay. They selected as a simple, at least eight characters, one number. And uh, that's how they're given the notifications and all, which notifications it has to be triggered whenever you want to reset the password, whenever you create the user, notifications can be submitted on the given email ID and all, all those you can set up here. Okay. So we'll go and create our own. You, if you want to change this, you can change it. So you can click on edit. Okay. Here you can change the password, uh, I mean, username generation rule. Okay, you can change it. And here also the password policy related information also you can change. You can select this and you can click on then how many days password need to be expired and how many days before it has to give the warning. The reset password link or any other links should be valid for how many hours. Okay, this is all you can set it up. Don't modify whatever Oracle provided as a default. If you want to create our own, we can create it. Don't modify that, that keep as this, okay? We have to go to user categories, click on create. Click on create, click on edit. We are going to create the new one. So I'm giving the name as some ABC category. So here I want to set username generation rule as email okay username system has to take the email id so the format is incorrect uh, upper case you can take abc cat or just fill without any space underscore okay, no space so ABC cat category I given here username generation rule I given as email and click on save and close. Let's click on save and close. We will go and set the password policy also. By default, what it will take at least eight characters, one number, right? We will set different password policy. So category is created and the username generation rule is email. Now go to password policy and click on edit. So this you can keep as this, okay? 19 days password will get expired. 10 days before system has to give the warning to the user as password is going to be expired. And the password complexity simply selected. Simple means minimum characters eight and minimum digits one. Now you can, you may change to complex. Complex means minimum characters eight, minimum letters in uppercase. One uppercase should be there in the password and the minimum digits are one. You may select very complex. So very complex means along with that. So one special character also need to be included in the password or else instead of going with simple, very simple complex, you can set your own policy. Okay, custom is the fields will be open. That means the minimum password say 10 characters should be and uh, minimum letters in uppercase, minimum one uppercase should be there. Lowercase also, one lowercase should be there. You can set here. One lowercase should be there and minimum digits, two digits, two numbers need to be included. And two special characters need to be included. That's how the password 
we have to set for every user. This is how you can set. Okay. So this is how you can set. Let's select simple only. So simple means this is the rule. Now say save and close. Now when you try to create the user, if you select this category ABC cat ABC category, so accordingly system will generate the username. Let's see that. Go to users. Say add user account. By default system will select default category only, which Oracle is providing. Now I'm changing to ABC cat ABC category. Now see email ID became mandatory because if you provide email ID, the same it will take as a username. So I'm giving XYZ last name. Email ID is mandatory. Okay, email ID is mandatory. Last name it is copying as a username. But in the, as per rule, username, mail ID is username. So I'm giving XYZ gmail.com. Now it will copy that same email ID as a username. Then you can set the password. Password policy is safe. We selected simple only, right? You place the cursor here, it will show. So this is how you can set the password. Okay, this is how you can set the password. Fine. So this is how you can set the password and say save and close. We are not assigning any roles to this user. So how client required that password policy and the username generation accordingly you can set by using the user category. So now we created one user called as TCS, right? Now we log into the instance to the TCS user that user is able to have access to FSM to do the setups. That user is able to have access to security console to create the new users or not, we will check. So you can sign out. So username we given as TCS and provide the password. To this user, we assign two roles, application implementation consultant and IT security manager. Now, because of application implementation consultant role, this user is able to have access to FSM, means functional setup manager page or not, we will check. How to check? Click on username. Okay, click on username. So when you click on username, within this panel, if you are able to see setup and maintenance, we have to understand this user got access to FSM. You just click on the same setup and maintenance task. Everything we call as a task. Now we are in the FSM page only. From here, you can implement any application. See here, we have a drop down. If you want to implement financials, select financials. Okay. Within the financials, you have general ledger application, payables application, expense application, different applications you can implement. So fixed assets, receivables, you can select receivables. So these are the receivable related setups. Select all tasks to implement receivables. These are the setups we have. Today. If you want to implement tables, select tables, select all tasks. So these are the setups we have to do related to tables. So if you want to implement general ledger application, select general ledger and say all tasks. Here we can perform all these setups. Okay. So this is all. Just you can take any application and you can do the setups. There is one post from somebody. Better you can ask the question instead of typing in the chart and all. Better you can ask the question from next time. For this time, I'll just answer. If you delete a user account, can we reuse that username again for a new user account? No, not possible. Once you delete, delete it, so after that, it won't allow you to create the user with the same name. The back end, the username would be available. From front end, it won't be available since you delete it. Okay. So that's how it works. It is not a permanent deletion because with that username, there might be transactions which are recorded. There might be setups which are created. 
for all those that user name should be available as a reference information that is the reason that is not a permanent deletion okay that is not a permanent deletion so temporary deletion only it won't be available so this is what we have to understand okay once you click on user name if you see the task called as setup and maintenance we have to understand this user got access to fsm you click on the same name it will take us to fsm page this we call as fsm page if you want to implement financials select financials if you want to implement any other applications accordingly you can select and you can do the setups from here okay so receivables you can select we'll discuss all those very detail level for now just for your information whether we got access to fsm or not we are checking from this user yes we got access another point is we will check whether this user got access to security console or not if you are saying it security manager role to the user that user can get access to security console to create the user now we connect it to the instance as a tcs user we'll go and verify this user is able to access to security console or not click on navigator icon within the navigator icon this panel you can find the tool section expand tools under tools if you are able to see security console that means this user got access to it security manager if you assign it security manager role to this user the it security manager role will allow you to have access to security console you can click on security console now from tcs user you can create the users go to users click on add user creating user called as cloud user see the user category is default by default system takes whatever oracle is providing if you want to change you can change the last name it is taking as name and you can set the password And if you want to assign the roles, yes, you can assign the roles. Any role you can assign. Okay. Application implementation consultant, IT security manager. Any roles you can assign. Again, I'm going to set the password. Just say one close. Just just for our testing purpose, I send only one row. Okay. So we are able to create the users from this TCS user. You can find the same user also. Whatever we created, TCS user we created. And if you want to take any action on this, you can take. I want to reset the password. Yes. Reset password. So this is how we have to create the initial user. We discussed one point. In the fresh instance, Oracle will provide one user called as a FA admin. With the FA admin, if you know the password, you can log into this instance. But what Oracle is doing is, Oracle is not allowing us to find that FA admin user from this security console. Search. No user, but that user is there in instance. Every instance that FA admin user would be available, they are not allowing. Why they are not allowing? Because that is the master user for every instance. In the older releases, in the previously, I, I, I could say up to around 2019 or 2020 year, they, they were allowing. I think up to 2020, 2019, up to 2019. They are giving the access to FA admin and they are allowing to access that username from here. What people are doing is they are changing the password to FA admin. So I got access to FA admin, I changed the password. That is a master user. No one can log into the instance. Again, we have to contact Oracle. So that's how there were some challenges. That is the reason what Oracle did is they stopped access to that FA admin from the security console. Okay, they restricted. They uh, the display they completely disabled 
from the security console. That is the reason even F admin user is available in this instance. You cannot access. If you access, you can change the password. That is the reason the access they're restricting to see from this page. So that is the reason. We, if you want to assign any additional roles to this user, you cannot do it. That is the reason what we have to do is when we get access to FA admin user or any other user, you have to log into that instance and we have to create our own user. This is what you have to understand. Just now we created a user and we assigned the roles and we have seen how to create the user category. And uh, we verified from this user, this user got access to FSM or not, we verified through this task. This user is able to access security console or not, that also we verified. We are in the same page now, right? Under tools, if you click on, if you see security console, that means IT security manager is assigned to this user. That's what you have to understand. Now you see here, we are able to see a lot of information here. Okay, many, many just uh, within this navigator, you can see many sections if you click on this username in this panel also you can see many tasks also we click on this uh, logo this vision is the logo you can change this logos also you just click on this logo vision logo this page also you can see many okay here you can click on next next you can see a lot of access this user got because of it security manager and application implementation consultant okay now from this we'll create another user without any roles and we will check how it will work. User. I'll create one user called as test user. I'm not assigning any roles. Notice this. Say save and close. Now I'll sign out from this TCS. I will connect to the instance as a test user. This user doesn't have access to anything. Now go to navigator, nothing. Something is showing, but with, with this, you cannot do anything. I think no activity you can perform and click on username. I think you don't see applications, uh, setup and uh, maintenance task, nothing you can see. Okay. So no roles are assigned, just without any roles, the user cannot do anything. Great user that user can have access to the instance to perform anything within this instance, the user need access. The access user can get only with the help of roles that's what we have to understand any questions from anyone please i will connect as a pcs any questions please yes lakshman so yes. Oh, sorry. accidentally i have deleted the uh, user okay. okay this is tcs right okay um, back in it will be available only for intent it has been disabled as you mm -hmm. mentioned Yes. So oh, late, later, if I want to reactivate the TCS user, which I have deleted. Not possible, it... not possible. Because you took, oh. action, you took the decision of deletion. Okay. So again, uh, you cannot recreate the user with the same name. That is so before, possible. yeah, okay, thank you. Before deleting this TCS user, it will ask any message or directly straight away. If I enter and they do, uh, delete, it will be deleted. It will ask you for the confirmation. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Asking cool. for the confirmation. Okay, so just now you have created the test user, right? So, mm -hmm. test user doesn't have any roles. If you want to allocate the uh, roles to test user uh, mm -hmm. directly, straight away, shall we copy TCS user? Uh, uh, based on no, no, no. now, user? copying is not possible. Copying means creating new user instead of creating new user from the scratch from beginning. You can copy when you copy it will ask you to give the new name for that same whatever assigned to that user those roles also will be copied oh okay okay see here this is the user i have test user i want to delete it yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay for confirmation okay thank you this is what tc okay. user we have this user i want to copy copy user 
see everything it is copying whatever the roles are assigned now we have to give the new name got it yeah okay you want to create one more user with the same roles yes you can copy that roles will be copied so say with the same name one more user you cannot create right what is yes. the user name you want to give those you can provide that's all that is the meaning oh, of okay if i create the new user automatically this copy two roles it will yeah, be yeah, that's what, that user. is the meaning of copy copy user means user okay. roles it will copy okay thank you now those are copied right i didn't add yes yes yeah yes right so we will discuss see now we cannot understand these points later we'll see when you create employee user now any questions on these points please whatever we have seen in the instance and whatever we did based on that any questions from anyone please Lakshman, uh, one thing, uh, yeah, one please. thing I want to ask. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, one thing I want to ask. Uh, suppose uh, we create one user and we assign some roles to the okay. user, and and we suppose we want to create ten more users mm. with those same roles. Yeah. So, is there any kind of template or something? Template, uh, no, no, no template. You can go with it is copy option only. Only copy option. Yeah, copy yeah. option. Correct. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. And uh, you have something, but that is not a like a role related. That that is something else. That once you have a roles, uh, what access you want to give, that you can use template. But direct role assignment, you don't have. Copy, you can use. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, like, uh, Lakshman, uh, yeah. you don't have that uh, end uh, end date and all, right? Yeah. End date is not there here. Only deletion or inactive. Inactive. Yeah. In EBS, if you take EBS, can you delete the user in EBS? No, no you can only end date. It. You cannot. Yes. Yeah. Only you can end date. Here, yeah. you cannot. You can equal to end date. You can lock it. Don't delete it. Lock it. So, so Lakshman, uh, sorry. Uh, so when you say like uh, there are, uh, say you have in a particular project, there are some uh, in from the business side, you have some 50 to 100 users. Mm. So earlier in EBS, we used to have this uh, uh, LTD file and then load it, right? Mm. All, all the uh, I mean uh, users, you create the users and all these stuff and all. So yeah. here, when you say you have a template here, so what kind of template is that uh, available in Fusion here? Yeah, we have a like a worker worker related template. We call it as a worker. Oh, okay. Implementation user basically as a consultant we create. Okay. Mm -hmm. Users required for whom? Employees. Yeah. Employees. Employees work on the system as a part of implementation. As a consultant, we work as implementation consultant. You don't need to create too many implementation users. For employees' purpose, we have a separate templates. Okay. So yeah. we we'll load we'll the data. Okay. Yeah, that is possible. Okay. So we'll be covering uh, as part of this, right? That is HCM related. Okay. If oh. you, I'll show you no issues. Okay. Yeah. If you could, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Yes, that that's enough. One, we'll one we'll work on the different different templates. Automatically, we'll come to know that also. I'll show you oh. many templates. Okay. Sure. This is one Thank of you. the template. You'll you'll get to know that. Thanks, Lakshman. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Lakshman. See, as of now, which we did, uh, that is only for the uh, implementation level, not for the employees, right? Consultant exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah. With the TCS uh, user, what we can do is we can implement payables, you can implement receivables, you can implement fixed asset, you can implement any application because. This TCS user got access to application implementation consultant that will give you access to FSM. Within the FSM only, you can have all the applications, any application you can implement, but this user cannot create a single transaction for any application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For that, we have a separate roles. For example, you want to allow one user or one employee to work on the payables. Payables roles are different. These, these these two roles for implementation purpose. Okay. Yes. yes Payables, receivables, we have a application specific roles. Those are different. Mm -hmm. Those we will assign once we complete the setup. Otherwise, you cannot record the transactions. 
okay and uh, this implementation to create the implementation user we have to get the request from the requester or uh, how we will do nothing say you are in, you are in the project okay yes you are in the project you need access to the instance right yes so ideally you may get the instance credentials directly from client client may share that this is the instance url this is a username and password which we received from the oracle that's how they okay. will share or else your project manager may share this instance url and do initial username maybe fa admin or else from your project uh, team lead or somebody you can get it once you get it, what you can do is you can log into that instance with a provided login credentials and you can create your own user then you can start working with that user as a part of your role in the company okay okay oh we have to create ourselves okay yeah, based on the ourselves. provided yes. credentials okay right. thank you thank yeah. you lakshman yeah any other questions uh, lakshman i have one doubt uh, if, uh, if we get the fresh instance uh, yeah. web uh, web web is there na web type uh, how we can identify this test and this dow like and also <clears throat> okay okay so what oracle will do is they'll include the name within the url yes url url here see here what you see that name dev can you see the name here dev yes yeah that you can use for development purpose or testing purpose or else if you want to keep the name as a test you can keep as a test if it is a production they can include a name as a production we can ask them okay we can ask okay. them to include the names very clearly or else just just some default names they will provide you can make a note okay the so and so number means this we are using for testing so and so number means we are using for production that's how we can remember ideally we oracle just uh, we can talk to them we will we'll start working on the implementation once we are going to start working with the production we can ask them okay please keep in the display as a production the users or consultants may get confused okay by mistake by treating production as a uh, test they may and do some testing also okay that goes wrong and all that's all okay the url itself they'll include that and we can enter uh, manually in this uh, url url login tab if any i didn't get you what manual entry url www dot in oracle like that uh, we oh, can no, no, no. you don't have you don't have that the server mapping etc naming uh, convention and all that should be done by oracle you cannot do anything login time i must Uh, this one, like, uh, this one, uh, if fresh instance will log in time. So, are you uh, talking about instance URL, creating instance URL, or uh... no? Uh, URL fresh instance log in time. How we can log in? There, there will be link, right? You will get the link. Okay. Yeah, no man. In the link, you click on that link. That's all. Okay. They, so they'll, they'll provide the link like this. so uh, they'll give the link www. Dot, okay https somefa. dot ek jr some okay test oracle cloud. dot this is how they'll provide some link ignore this this you no need to say www here this is the link you can click on this link it will take you to the page and you can log in that's all is every company same like link we can move not yeah, for every company or are going to provide right so here they will be changing okay this is unique because for every company same instance no like every company unique so for every company it may give this this is the it will be changed For some other company, it may be some something else that is equal to port number. Unique port they maintain. Okay. Okay. The standard is in FA dot and Oracle Cloud dot com. Standard is FA dot no, Oracle right. Cloud. No, 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 they can change it. Okay. Sometimes they give FA dot US. Okay. Okay. They'll change. They'll change. That you no need to worry about. Just we need one URL. That's all. Instead, you are just click on that. You log in. 
you start your job good thank you okay this is how it works uh, okay lakshman see Lakshman. Uh, yes carry on yeah uh, this in ebs uh, we have that uh, username <coughs> associated uh, hr record that person will be there right yeah here also we have Uh, not, we have it but not okay. with this not with the, not with this so okay. compare it to ebs ebs see simply you can create the user in the, the system administrator responsibility and you can assign the employee to that mm. here you have to add that employee profile here that is separate process that only we call as employee user here okay. now you cannot do that if you want to create the employee user you have to complete many setups after completing all those setups i'll take you through that process okay okay thank you it is not same as ebs okay so they change the game we'll 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 go through that okay thank you yeah okay uh... Oh, yes, I'll ask one more small question. So just now you provided HTTPS dot FPA RFGT, right? So uh, for example, I have received this link from the uh, so and so. So whether I how I can recognize whether it is production uh, link or uh, a test. Here link. in the okay. URL, oh. you can see that the prod prod means prod. Oh, oh. Uh, that this is default, right? For all. See, yes, ideally Oracle will provide. Yes, they'll include in that uh, instance level. So this prod or test they include. Oh, okay, okay. So these include in every instance. Okay. The rest of naming convention it totally depends how they are generated. But the term I... you see in every instance to identify. Yes, yes. In our organization, say I can see development and SUP TST and uh, some PTC will get. Okay, this is the by default, right? The production yeah, or this, test this they will provide. Yeah, this is how you get. Okay, every link. You see, sometimes you may come across they don't include also. In that case, you can request them. Please include uh, as a test in our environment. We don't see this easily. We are not able to recognize. We may get mm -hmm. then they will uh, just rename it. Okay, we this naming and all whose responsibility is from Oracle the... DBA team. Acha DBA team will uh, okay okay implement Correct. this. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? any questions from anyone no questions right the next point is so if you have to start with the implementation okay we have to start with the fsm okay functional setup manager functional setup manager when we talk about functional setup manager here we have to understand few points so here we discussed these are the different solutions are available from oracle right so you take this here the same as per fsm within the fsm this is all we call as reality these are product families this we call as product families this is all we call as product families financials is one product family hcm is one product family scm supply chain management is one product family procurement is one product family the same way projects and crm customer relationship management hcm human capital management or you can call as hrms human resource management system is all we call as product families is all as per fsm okay as per fsm let me take your fsm as per fsm is all we call as offerings Financials we call as offering. Means Swarak is offering the solution called as financials. That is the meaning of it. It's same we call as an offering. It is all we call as offerings. So financials is one of the offering. Each product family, as per FSM, we are calling as offering. If you take example of financials offering within the financials offering, what are the different applications we have? Here we discuss. A P R C M F A G L. We have few other like this also supporting processes, setups, etc. So for our example, I'm taking. So within the financials, we have applications like A P, A R, C M, F A, so G L. These are the applications we have. As per F S M, okay. As per F S M, these product families we are calling as offerings. 
So when you call these product families as offerings, what you call these applications? As per FSM, these applications we call as a options. Option, AP is one option, AR is one option. When you take the subscription from Oracle, you have to inform to Oracle which offerings you are going to subscribe within the specific offering, which options you are going to subscribe. Say one client may choose financial offering. Within the financial offering, they may choose GL, AP, AR, and CM. They may not implement FA, then they don't select the option called as FA, fixed assets. So this is how at the time of implementation, the client has to choose which offerings and which options they need subscription to implement. Just remember the terminology. Each application we are calling as option. Each product family we are calling as a offering. So in the fresh instance, okay, when we are working as an implementation consultant, in the fresh instance, the very first step is we have to create our own user. After creating the user, which offerings and options we are going to implement for the client, those all we have to enable. What we have to do? We have to enable offerings and options. We have to enable offerings and options. After enabling the offerings and options, we have to create implementation projects. Create implementation project. After creating implementation project, you have to select offerings and options into that implementation project. You have to select offerings and options into implementation project. So that system creates task list. System creates task list. So this is a process you have to follow. Say you got a access to instance and you create your own user. Okay, you created your own user. So after creating your own user, generally we create users like this, okay? So for finance, you may create user as a pin. For SCM, you may create as a user as a CM. For HCM, you may create user as, this is very generic names. This is how generally we create as a part of implementation, okay? Or else if you are implementing for TCS, you can give the name as TCS pin finance, TCS SCM, TCS HCM. So this is how you can include the company name and you can create or else simply this is how we create the users. Okay, finance fin or you can give the name as finance, SCM, HCM. You are implementing PPM, PPM. This is how we create the users. So if you are working for finance, you don't need to create any other users. For finance, how you want to have a name, you can create it simply, okay? So or else you can create as a finance implementation. Finance underscore pin underscore IMPL you can create or else you can create pin IMPL. So any name, okay? There is no rule here. Generally, this is how we create. So, after creating user, you have to enable the offerings and options. Say you are working for one client, the client is going to implement only finance, HCM, and SCM. These three offerings they are going to implement. In the instance, you have to enable those. We will see how to enable those. We can enable offerings and within the offerings options by using FSM. From FSM, we have to enable the offerings and options. What are the offerings and options you enable those you can select into implementation project. Those you can select into implementation project. What is the implementation project creation here? It's very simple. To perform the setups, okay, to perform the setups in the system environment, whatever we create that we call as implementation project. Don't think implementation project means the real implementation project, what we do with various activities, of starting the project and doing various activities and implementing the project. No. Whatever the term we are discussing here, create implementation project. Create implementation project is nothing but we are creating the project to perform the setup. To do the setups, whatever we define that we call as implementation project. The actual implementation is different from this. Within the implementation, one of the activities is doing the setups. 
to do those setups for that implementation project what are the implementation project we create that we call, call it as a implementation project in the system environment okay so we create implementation project so what are the offerings you are going to implement these three now these three we select into that implementation project so that to implement these three offerings within the offerings we'll have options right if in finance there are different applications those all are options in hcm we have a different application those are those we are calling as options in scm we have a different application those we are calling as options so once we select these three offerings and along with the offerings we have to select the options also whenever you select the offerings and options into your implementation project to implement these offerings and options what setups need to be performed automatically system will create all those setups in the implementation project that only we call as a task list task list is nothing but list of the setups the list of the setups may be related to specific option or for entire offering also okay so this is how we have to perform this you can unmute and you can ask the question anyone okay no need to raise the hand unmute and ask the question at any point of time you can stop me and you can raise your question please so let's when this is vinay here so yeah. to create implementation project is just like creating the checklist that what all we need to set up as a part of our implementation yeah creating implementation project means giving the name selecting offerings and options into implementation project is exactly what you said checklist what setups need to be completed if i select for example i created implementation project i selected offering called as financials and i selected within the financials offering i selected ap only when i select ap within the implementation project it will create ap checklist to implement ap what setups need to be performed it will list out that list only i am calling as a task list okay sure thank you lakshmi yeah yeah that's all just see directly you cannot select option optionings are part of offerings if i am going to implement scm i have to enable as i have to select scm into implementation project within the scm which application i am going to implement say inventory now i have to select inventory option so that inventory setups it will list out so that we can do the setups so if i want to select any offerings and the option into implementation project first that should be enabled say for example i enabled financials i enabled and hcm i enabled the first activity enable offerings and options i enable financials and hcm within financials and hcm what are the options what are the applications are available all we enable now i created implementation project now i can select only financials and hcm into my implementation project if i want to select scm i cannot select reason that is not enabled the enabled offerings and options only you can select into implementation project whatever you select into implementation project those only you can implement for those only you can do the setups so whenever you select offerings and options the relevant setup system will create setups means which is setups we have to perform it will list out it won't complete the setups it will list out okay you are going to implement financials and hcm applications or offerings so these are the setups you have to complete so that you can use financials and hcm that's how system will list out that's how system will list out all the setups so that we can start working on the system so this is what you have to understand there are few more points that we will see after creating this project in the system so any questions on this point please so like when so this offering will be enabled only when we pay oracle for uh, getting those su subscriptions right no by default what oracle is doing is they are allowing all the clients to have access to all the offerings and options okay and you can use those also even if you don't take the subscription these instances will be controlled by oracle right without taking the subscription if you start using oracle can track and there will be penalties that is reason nobody will touch but everyone can access even in production as well in every environment every environment production also yep 
you can access. Say you take in the subscription for finance, HCM, SCM. Still, you will be able to access procurement and projects and other areas also. But you remember, we know that we never implement those. Since we didn't take any subscription from Oracle, even those are available as a part of our instance, we never use those. If you start using Oracle, you can identify them. They do the auditing. They'll find out if are using any other applications where you don't have subscription or license, there will be penalties. This is how it will work. So we're done for today. Okay, we're done for today. If you have any questions, you can stay back. We will discuss. Okay, so we'll connect tomorrow, same time. Yep. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Hey, Lakshman, I have one question. Please. This implementation project will list out all the required tasks or all tasks it will list out? All tasks. All tasks. Again, it will show which are required, which are not required. So it depends upon the uh, project, like which task we want to set up, uh, perform and all those stuff. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions, please? Uh, Lakshman, uh, for any implementation, uh, so when you create an implementation project, for example, uh, you have multiple countries uh, mm -hmm. originating for this particular project. So I have US, I have Europe, I have uh, so Asia Pacific, India. Yeah. So is it uh, country specific or uh, how how it, it handles your? Action? Yeah. See what purpose we are using implementation project just for setups. You can create one implementation project and you can do the setups for multiple countries or else create separate implementation project for each country so that your setup process will go very smooth. How exactly that I'll show you when we start working on the implementation project. Okay. Yeah. okay. As a best practice, what we do is we create separate implementation project country wise. Otherwise, there will be some mess in the setups. Okay. Yeah. So how is the track record like, uh, see, it's been uh, quite a while, like uh, Oracle Fusion has been brought by Oracle. So I just want to understand like uh, for a big industry uh, like PepsiCo or some uh, any other industry. So is it feasible for uh, a Fusion to get implemented in this? Those yes, kind of they can go, the big organizations can go with the PaaS model. PaaS model, okay. PaaS, platform okay. as a service. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Next one, just one last question from my end. Yeah. Uh, related to the buying of subscription from Oracle, do mm -hmm. they have any limitation for the user that the, uh, the minimum user for this license will be 50 users or we can- Few, few applications we have. If you take finance side, okay. Finance side here, for almost all, like with the less users you can take, but for fusion expense, we have some big number. For rest of all, with very small headcount, uh, they are giving the license. I think for fusion expense, minimum minimum 50 users are required. That's how we have a limit. For rest of all, so very less headcount also, you can take the subscription. Thank you, Lecture. Thanks. So three points they consider, okay. Time frame, duration, time, one is time. Other one is applications, which applications and account, number of users. Based on these three parameters, so we take the subscription for how many years, which applications and for how many users. Based on these parameters, the companies can take the subscription. And again, they will choose, they need SaaS or PaaS. I ask it is just storage space, nothing to do with that. You don't find any application until unless you go and install those. So in case of SaaS and PaaS, this is how it works. And we can go from uh, SaaS to PaaS anytime after implementing? Anytime, yes. Only the difference between SaaS and PaaS is what? Here, they will allow you to do the customization. They'll give the additional permission which is not available in this. So you are work using as you implemented your company, you implemented with the SaaS application, SaaS subscription. 
you started working, there are certain requirements which are not meeting with the standard product which Oracle is providing. You thought of adding some new pages or you thought of creating new applications with the help of technical consultants. In SaaS, that is not possible. You can talk to Oracle, they'll charge some additional amount. They'll give the option of doing the customizations. Then your environment, you can call as pass. That's all. Anytime you can switch. SaaS to pass. Thank you, Lakshman. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Lakshman, uh, yeah, the user which we are creating and uh, let's say suppose we created the TCS user and after that we deleted it, right? And uh, it is still exist in the database level. Correct. But in the previous release, we only prefer to end it and uh, it is it is already we have recorded See, in when the you talk about end dates and all don't delete it you inactivate it mm -hmm. yeah you lock it you lock that account that's all okay and so it means when when let's suppose when we are deleting this user so it remain exist in the database right yeah database so you cannot see from front end uh, from here you cannot see and you cannot log into the instance and the same user we cannot create. Uh, so why they are keeping in the back end? That username should be available with the reference of that you from that user which setups are completed and which transactions are recorded. Right? That is the reason. With the same name, again, you cannot create the user because that user really it is going to be in the database, but it won't be visible from front end. Intentionally, you delete it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, Lakshman. I have one question. Uh, the instant access, the instance access which we got from ER, uh, ERP3, I am able to see everything like uh, options, offering, and yeah, in the navigation. The user already assigned these two roles. That is the reason you are able to see. So do I still need to uh, uh, like uh, set up a user account or yeah, I create can get... your own user, create your own user and you assign these two roles and you follow our classes. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Lakshman might be this question would be uh, very early, but uh, just a little uh, curious. Yeah. So Please. from implementation perspective, uh, will be a uh, do we have a session kind of uh, scenario? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the classes. Okay, I'll oh. take the classes, implementation project, support project, how implementation project can be executed, what would be the finance or functional consultant, technical DBS, and what are the various activities we do? Okay, how we interact with the clients, how we collect the data, what are the documents we prepare, what are the like CRPs, UATs, etc. Data can all the points we'll discuss. Okay, how real time implementation can be executed? Those all I'll take separate classes. Oh, okay, because uh, a whole project no, how can prepare for your enter use. Okay. okay, so we will work on all those. Yeah, expecting a scenario. You have to learn the product. Okay, yeah. we have to learn the product. <laughs> I know, I understand. I understand. Once we are comfortable with that, uh, that that is also very much important along with this. Yeah, cover all those. Agreed. Yeah. Fine. Any question how we have to get those uh, recorded videos? Recorded videos as of now, like uh, the two sessions we completed, the, those we posted in the YouTube itself. Okay. So that you can keep in touch with our team, you can get it. Thank you. So instance access or videos, you can keep in touch with the team. You might be in touch with somebody from our team, right? You can talk to them. They'll help you to get the videos or instance access. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Right. This we'll see in the tomorrow session. Okay, how to enable offerings and options, and how to create implementation project, how to select offerings and options, and how system will create the task list, how we can update the status, how we can do the assignments to the team members. This all will once after completing the, this, we will discuss those points and uh, accordingly we'll proceed. So if no questions, we can wind up for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. No questions. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Same time. Thanks, Ajit. <clears throat>
Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you all.